Hey guys, it's Enemy K Swimming Bird, and this is Splatoon. We are live with Splatter Day Night Live, you know, as is the way. <laughs> We're back playing on the Wii U in the build up to Splatoon 2 on Switch. It does not come out for another month or so, but I really want to hit level 50. You can see up in the upper right, I am 48 on the way to 49. I don't have much longer to go, so we're going to jump into some Turf Wars, try to get me some experience, and I will be playing with you guys. In the meantime, we'll be talking Splatoon 2 news. E3 was this week, if you happen to miss it, a big gamey event, you know, you've probably heard of it, probably the biggest gamey event of the entire year. And uh, lots of Nintendo news, we learned that Mario can possess things, he can capture the brains of frogs and T-Rexes and Hammer Brothers and all that good stuff. We uh, saw a bit of arms that is out. We're going to have the first episode up soon for you guys to watch. Probably already up if you're watching this later. And uh, lots of other games. Reveals for Yoshi and Kirby. Metroid is coming back. We're going to have... Uh, we got my favorite song here with the nice box art colors for Splatoon. A good way to uh, start sending this game off a little bit. But yeah, lots of different stuff. 2D Metroid and 3D Metroid on the game. Very exciting. But some of the stuff I got the most excited to see was all of the uh, the stuff for Splatoon 2 that we learned along the way. Someone was waiting on the edge right there, where they just happened to shoot right along the edge. I see you there. Where are you? Down here? Oh! <laughs> they jumped away at the last second. I gotta get my aim back, because I have not played for weeks. Uh, the last stream was the last time I played, so I gotta try my best to, uh, to start getting back into the game. That's why we're starting with a good old splatter shot. Let's see if we can get out of here quick enough. I have been watching a lot of Splatoon 2, though, so, uh, you know, my mind should hopefully be pretty sharp for that style of, uh, well, no, maybe not. Let's see if I can ink him from over here a little bit. Oop, right there. There we go. Managed to survive that bomb rush somehow. Um, but yeah, Splatoon 2, not only did we get a lot of uh, news and, and looks at single player mode, Octo Canyon is the name of the single player campaign. Uh, we got a little bit of Salmon Run that we spotted. I did put a link to the big Inkling, uh, World Inkling Invitational Tournament if you want to watch that later after the stream, hopefully, or the video. You can check that out. That was four teams from all over the world, basically the best teams, uh, you know, debatably, but the ones who won a contest from the EU, that was the uh, Rising Moon team from, from Europe. Deadbeat was the team from America. I got a brush here, I gotta be careful. Um, we had Deadbeat from uh, from America. Man, I had a couple splats, but I got taken out myself. Uh, Japan had Dynamu. They were really, really good. You know, not to, all the teams were really good, but I really thought that, uh, I, I guess I, I don't want to spoil the tournament, so I won't say anything more than that. Uh, and then, <laughs> From the Oceania, you know, Australia and New Zealand, that area, we had uh, the Blue Ring Octolines. I was really hoping they would win because I liked their style a lot. They had some, some, uh, some good matches. Anyways, we uh, we got that was a whole big thing that we got to see a ton of Splatoon 2. New maps were revealed not long before the tournament. We got the Ink Blot Art Academy, which is a new map. See if I can lure someone into that. They're probably not going to fall for it. Shoot over the edge. Yeah, we're in a weird pickle here. They might go around the side or sneak up on me. I don't know where they're hiding. One of their... Oh, I was going to say, one of their players really likes to hide a lot. I do have my Inkzuka, so maybe I can kind of hit him over the edge. Although that was a bad spot to use it because I'm kind of caught in the corner here. And they know exactly where I'm at. Nope. There we go. A little bit more turf, hopefully. Nope. Ah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think they won because we kind of didn't hold down. Uh, oh, we got an ink strike right at the end. Yeah, it was somewhat even, a little mixed. Maybe we got more even coverage than them to win it. All right, good first match of Turf Wars there. I'm surprised. I'm so rusty. I'm surprised I was able to win in some of those exchanges, but it worked out well. We were even top of the team. I'm happy about that. Um, so yeah, the tournament was amazing. Definitely check that out. The, uh, the new stages, Ink Blot Art Academy, was really cool. It's kind of an evolution of the uh, the one, uh, I already forgot, the Art Museum. Man, I can't believe, it's been a while, of course, since i played, so I already forgot the, uh, the museum's name. You guys know the stage. If you're watching, you probably know a lot about Splatoon, so you can fill me in. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe I forgot the name of that. But the uh, the new new stages I do know the names of. There's also Humpback Pump Track. That is a real stage name, and it's a cool stage. It has like a 
a bike track going around the outside with tons of turf. I really liked seeing that in the tournament. And they also played on some that we know from the Global Test Fire from not too long ago, a couple months now. The uh, Muscle Forge Fitness and the Reef, we saw more of that. We also saw Moray Towers, which is returned from the, uh, the first game here. And that has a lot of adjustments. We have Ink... Ink Rails, Ink Line is the brand of clothing in the game. Ink Rails are the uh, the things that you ride on in single player, but they those are in multiplayer. Also, a couple of the maps, uh, Starfish Main Stage was also shown, and that one has sponges on it. As crazy as that is, we have uh, sponges. Ooh, nope, I couldn't name fast enough. Um, Museum de, Alfon de Alf Alfonsino, or yeah, the Alfonso. That's the, uh, the man. No wonder I couldn't remember it. It's in another language. Uh, so, so that one, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of like the new Art Academy stage. They're very similar in idea. They've got little be pits, you know, bits of artwork scattered around that you can ink and hide behind and stuff. So it's nice to see that aesthetic returning, but it's more of a, uh, a kind of campus university sort of style to it. Somebody's booyahing at me. Oh, jeez, man, out of nowhere, the, uh, the samurai strikes. <laughs> with all that damage up to make sure their arrow spray got the splat a lot faster. Um, and then, uh, I was talking about Starfish Main... Yeah, Starfish Main Stage, I think that's the one that had the, uh, the sponges on it, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, a lot of the single-player elements are returning to Splatoon 2, but in the actual stages. I'm a little worried that that guy's waiting for me down here somewhere, creeping about. This is... I keep going down the same way... Oh, jeez! Yeah, they waited, and then they just both pounced at the same time. Maybe I should go a different way, obviously, if I keep getting splatted there. Purple team is really pushing in this last minute. We're in trouble if we don't get more ink. One thing I'm really excited and uh, anxiously awaiting for the sequel is being able to use the Pro Controller to actually aim my ink instead of uh, the gamepad, which is a little bit... a little bit... Uh, cumbersome to move around. I'm, I'm very excited to see... Man, Ryan's freaking out. I'm very excited to use the uh, the Pro Controller again to be able to play, like in the Test Fire, because i really starting to get used to that new controller's style a lot more, and uh, I do like the improved gyro controls on that and everything, so I'm hoping... You know, we don't have too much longer, but I'm hoping I'll be able to get my aim down a little bit better with a better style of, uh, of controller jump up here and take someone out. Oop, there we go. <laughs> Got Carson. I think we're going to lose this turf wars, though, because they're really locking down the middle here. Yeah. Museum de Alfonso is French. De meaning of, and Alfonso is the name of, yeah, I think it's a, uh, it might be a type of seafood because all the, or, or fish, because all the, all the maps have that theme, obviously. Yeah, that was a rough match. Uh, so yeah, the, uh, the different stages, we saw more of the ones that were already revealed, but we got some new ones as well. And uh, a lot of focus put on Salmon Run in the single player, Octo Canyon. It was nice to see more of that in actual, like, gameplay, rather than a trailer. And uh, I'm gonna actually swap weapons here, and we'll get a new group going as well. So you guys can jump in and jump in these Turf Wars. I'm just playing a Turf War so we can get a little bit of experience as we go, because if I only do private battles with you guys, then uh, I'm not getting any experience. You know, the tangible experience, not the... Uh, the experience within of, of leveling up. I'm not getting the uh, the in-game experience that I would normally want to have to be able to hit level 50. We're going to switch over to the ink brush a little bit. Um, so yeah, Octo Canyon is the, the single player mode, which, you know, involves Marie as the Captain Cuttlefish role. If you didn't watch the trailer for that, definitely check that out because there are some teases about Callie's role. Maybe she's kidnapped. Maybe she's evil now. It's, uh, it's a little... A little up in the air, but there's so many new types of Octarian weapons and, and different stuff to see. Also, there's going to be a bunch of v uh, weapon variety for what you can use, because uh, Sheldon from Ammo Knights is involved with the single player even more, because he's he's letting you switch to, you know, Octo Brush, Slosher, the, uh, the Roller and, and Charger and stuff like that, that normally you'd have to do in those side amiibo missions if you wanted to play in this the single player of this game. They've, uh, they've changed things around, so the single player is going to have a lot more variety to it. And also, the, the weapon variety in that in the thing they showed, there was a couple empty slots that could potentially be some new weapon types. 
that maybe they just haven't revealed yet, and that would be really cool, because I think it would be strange if they only had the Splat Duelies as a new weapon type. We already have a ton of weapons, obviously, but if it was just the Splat Duelies, I think it would be a little odd for a new game to, yeah, they, they could always add more in the future like they did with the Slosher and the, uh, the Splatling, but I just, yeah, I feel like they've got some cards up their sleeve that we don't know about yet, and uh, they don't want to reveal everything before the launch, obviously. Let's see if we can get this going a little bit. So, uh, I have to mention, you know, we'll, we'll go into Salmon Run and stuff in a little bit, but I gotta mention some of the really cool new stuff that we learned about. The sub-weapons, the special weapons, there's a lot of changes. More than, uh, I think most people realize. We just saw a, uh, Disruptor there. The Disruptors are not around anymore in the sequel. This is a real bad spot for me to be, because I can't really even get in close to the people sitting up there, but I just saw someone go over, and they're probably somewhere here. Where they go? Oh, they got my buddy. I think so. If we can get in at them. Oh, no, no! Ah! The sprinkler was not them. I was hitting stuff, and I was like, wait, that's a sprinkler. We need to get the, uh, the person. Um, so, the, uh, the Disruptor is gone, but in its place we have Toxic Mist, which is like a Disruptor that stays on the ground, and it makes this little swirl that if you go into, it has the effects of a Disruptor. It slows you down, it makes your ink, uh, not recover as well. I threw that too high so it didn't stay up there. I gotta be careful about that. We got a, one of those carbon rollers hanging out around the side that I gotta be weary of. I think I'm gonna get my special here pretty soon and then throw that down because they're all moving in. And that should hopefully catch somebody trying to get out of the way. Oh man, I didn't get everybody, or anybody. The disruptor is making life rough on me. Let's see if we can get these guys as they jump over there. There we go, got one of them. The other one's sitting there. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Move up quick and get this inked as fast as we can, and hopefully I don't get taken out, because I'm in a bad spot here. I'm trying to get up there and get him. There we go. Somebody else around here? It's hard to tell sometimes. I gotta be careful. Nope. I'm in a bad spot where they're gonna sneak around and potentially get me. Let's throw that there, and then maybe I'll deal with them while they move over here. Oh, they can tell I'm right here, can't they? Why am I not able to get on top of that? <laughs> I was, like, stuck in a weird crack where it wouldn't let me ink on there. We're starting to push in, even though it's the last few seconds. If we can kind of hold on, I'm just going to jump in to get a cool last look at the map. I think we got that. Maybe partially thanks to my push into their turf. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Toxic Mist replaces the Disruptor. We have some other new weapons, it seems, or sub-weapons especially. It seems like the Seeker is not returning because we have a new thing called an Auto Bomb. It's this little submarine with feet. It's like a robot that runs in. You throw it, and it kind of has a radius where if a player, an enemy player is within that radius, it will start to track them and chase after them and waddle like a little bomb, basically. And uh, it's a cool little, yeah, way to kind of have, I think the Seeker has become the Curling Bomb and the Auto Bomb. Like, those two new sub-weapons fill some of the same roles of the Seeker, where the Auto Bomb tracks in and the Curling Bomb is this bounceable thing that can create a path. So I think those, those niches are still being filled in Splatoon 2, even if the Seeker is not going to return. I really like the Auto Bomb. It's actually on the Octobrush set that we saw uh, quite a bit of in the tournament. It was nice to see at least two Octobrush players that I noticed, and I don't see too much of that in uh, in a lot of competitive Splatoon matches. Like, it doesn't seem as popular of a weapon compared to certain other, you know, more easy to uh, to get splats with and, and better turf coverage sorts of weapons. Playing with my favorite ink color here, which I'm happy to say is uh, returning, it looks like, in the, in the sequel. This kind of light blue, I really like the kind of Squid Girl blue. I'm gonna see if we can... Get some ink coverage there, and I thought that was one of my, or one of the enemies. Oh, I gotta be careful, because the other, I, it's hard to know exactly where best, my best, you know, bet is to put my sprinkler on this map. Now, speaking of uh, sub-weapons, I should mention, too, the, the sprinkler has changed quite a bit. It actually has a lot of ink coverage early on when you first throw it. That blaster is just not doing, yeah, look at him over there. They're just kind of, I think this is when, could throw that over. Maybe it'll land on them. Nope. <laughs> they're not messing with that. They seem like they know what they're doing a little too much to uh, to be fooled by the blast, or the uh, 
the sprinkler there. Try to cover this as best I can, but that blaster's gonna move back in. Ah! <laughs> they didn't want to deal with my shenanigans, so they just kind of took it out there. They're moving in. Yeah, it's such a tough setup here where I'm, I'm really trying to fight these guys and uh, keep them back, but I don't have the range. This is not a good map for the brush, especially, and I can't, yeah, and I gotta get in there and try to try to push on them best I can. Yeah, someone's over here. Hopefully they'll help me out. Yep, track them. There we go. All right, I'm pushing in, trying to get through here and get into a better position, because I'm not doing much from where I was at, just kind of throwing sprinklers at people that I can't reach is not going to help anybody. Oh, let's see if we can hide a little bit and throw this down, because I'm in a bad, bad spot. Nope. Ah, <laughs> they saw me there. Yeah, Tiller, he's a name I recognize on the friends list. Um, so, yeah, the uh, the sprinkler, the big thing with that is it, it still, it might have a stronger ink coverage, it sounds like, from when you first throw it down, but then once it's down for a while, it loses a lot of that coverage and kind of wears out, so you can't just rely on it to stay there as long as you're alive. Like, it will, I think, I believe, I don't think it blows up or anything from what they said. It doesn't self-destruct unless destroyed, but you have to deal with the fact that it's not really going to be as effective if you're leaving it in one spot for too long, encouraging you to, uh, to try to do multiple, uh, oh, man, how do you, he zipped over in the corner, or she did, before I could even <laughs> see where they were. I thought they weren't even past me yet. Uh, we got a little bit of time here, not much for me to able, to, you know, be able to do much. I don't think I'm going to have enough for my ink strike unless I really cover, cover, cover turf. We got a little bit of the middle, but they started to get our side, and I think that's going to be enough for the pink team to take it. So yeah, Sprinkler's slight change there. Splash Walls are returning. Jeez, by 0.4%. Ah, if I had that Ink Strike, could have helped us out. Um, and then uh, some of the other internal point sensors do return. Ink Mines got a big buff. So Ink Mines, not too many people use those in this game. And uh, they actually buffed them where you can't detonate them when you want to, but you can now lay two Ink Mines... Uh, at, you know, at a time, you can have two of them out active, and the radius is a little bit, seems a little bit wider when it explodes to try to catch people, and in, in that kind of, uh, with, with that buff in mind, they did have, they have a new ability, a new gear ability called Sub Power Up, they also have Special Power Up, but th this is really cool because Sub Power Up, every sub weapon benefits from it differently, so if you have an Ink Mine, or Toxic Mist, one of those ones that has like a radius to it, and you have sub power up, it actually makes that have a bigger area of effect and makes it a little easier for you to catch people before they can get away, which is really cool because Ink Mines, you know, they're big weakness. They're uh, the big thing with them. It just really seems like they're not able to catch people. You, even if you go over one on accident, you can usually get out of the way in time before, you know, somebody, somebody gets you. Let's see if we can catch someone here sneaking around. I see all this ink spread back there. Throw that in. Oh, that was a bad spot for it because someone's just going to go and get it. I wonder if I could throw something down and they're going to pop up and try to hit me. They don't know I'm here necessarily, though. They were looking up at me. Nope. Now I've revealed my <laughs> location. There they go. Okay. Did somebody get him? Yep, I can see the grizzly ghost of a blue squid. Alright, this is the good time to push in. My whole team's over here. Blue is getting the other side. Um, so yeah, the the fact that you can actually power up your sub-weapons, that's going to be a really cool ability. I think it's going to be nice to have as a alternative to necessarily, you know, instead of making your, your uh, sub-weapon fire off quicker by having, you know, some sub-saving abilities. Might just get out of here. Jump back into a safer spot. Um, being able to actually power it up is a cool alternative, which I didn't think about, you know, that they added to that. Oh, oh man, everyone's going splat. Um, and then I mentioned before, yeah, so, or special power up is another alternative, and that powers up certain things like with the new Tenta missiles, it'll make it so your lock on uh, marker is larger so you can catch more people with that. Stuff like that, it really varies between the different subs and special weapons, what that is going to do. And we've had some major nerfs to abilities like Quick Respawn. So that one is uh, is 
going to be uh, not quite as effective if you're really good at the game. So quick respawn, you know, originally helped you respawn quicker, especially if you stacked a bunch of it. And uh, the new version is actually uh, only going to activate if you don't get any splats on your life. So if you get killed without getting any splats, you will respawn much, much quicker. But if you happen to get a splat, then it will not go into effect. So it is more of an ability for people either just starting out or someone who's going to play self-sacrificially and maybe just go after the objective. Maybe someone who jumps on the tower more often is going to be able to use that. And, uh, ooh, I really shouldn't have. Man, person is going to be up there and know that I'm here most likely. I was really trying to go for whoever was sitting there. I'm so rusty that I really got it be a lot quicker with this stuff. There goes that person. See if we can catch him. Nope. Jeez. Ah. Nah, too long. Too far away. And my, we got somebody pushing in, but we got an ink strike on our end getting thrown. I'm not going to have time. Let's begin a quick respawn. That was so slow respawning that their ink strikes are all going over, and that is not very orange at all anymore. Um, so yeah, quick respawn nerfed, and it doesn't look like stealth super jump, like stealth jump is going to return. Maybe not Ninja Squid either. I haven't seen any Ninja Squid stuff, but they could have some abilities not revealed at this point. I think it's time to switch off the uh, the brush here. We've got almost entirely people from my friends list playing now instead of uh, all the, you know, the randos. I think we've mostly you guys jumping in, so the competition's getting a little tougher here. Um, so let me see. Let's play uh, maybe a little slosher. And, yeah, this one's pretty good. I like the SpongeBob style soda slosher. Um, so, so yeah, the, uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember some of the other abilities here. I do have actually a little chart to, uh, to help remind me. So we have, you know, Ink Saver Main, Ink Saver Sub, Ink Recovery, Run Speed, Swim Speed, so Quick Super Jump, Quick Respawn, uh, Special Power Up and Sub Power Up are new. Ink Resistance Up is now, it's, uh, not just stuck on footwear so ink resistance is a ability it's not a main ability like it's not it can be a sub ability and you can have as much of it as you want and it actually you know enhances with power the more you stack it so it's really it's kind of strange how they changed it so radically from in this game but it is cool that yeah you're going to be able to have as much or as little ink resistance as you need to the point where I would not be surprised if you really, you know, min-max and have a ton of ink resistance up. I might see players, you know, swimming through enemy ink. I don't know if that's going to be something that is possible. We got chargers on the enemy team, so it looked like someone just, you know, skirted right up to our lines, but I think that was a charger. Man, I am not... My ink uh, usage with this weapon is never good because I want to throw out my bombs and then I've run out of the ability to actually throw my sloshes out there that I need. The precious sloshes. Sloshes to be able to actually do anything. Um, we'll have more practice with the slosher in single player mode, which is definitely appreciated. Someone is right over there. Hopefully I'll catch him with that bomb. Nope, did not, but that's okay. I do have my Ixuka. Oh, there they go. I might be able to actually dip over the edge here and hit him. Did see them over there. I think I'm gonna go with Inkzuka. Nope. Ah. Nope. Ah. <laughs> I thought I, you know, hit them enough for them to back up, but really, they just zipped in there. Look at them using. Yeah, they either just started out or they started a new character because they're just like throwing sprinklers down and zipping all over. They're doing good, especially if they are just starting. Um. So the uh, yeah the other ability stuff like ink resistance up being a an ability you can stack is pretty crazy, and then there's also. Uh, what was the other one that was new? Oh, Bomb Defense Up. Instead of Bomb Sniffer, there's Bomb Defense Up. And it looks like Defense Up, as well as Attack Up, are no more... I thought I could make that. <laughs> I need a little Bomb Throw Up, which hasn't been revealed either. I don't know if Bomb Throw Up is going to return. Or Bomb Range Up is what... Yeah, Throw Up always sounds gross. Uh... But yeah, it seems like they're changing, getting rid of some of the abilities that maybe weren't as used or as useful, and then they're moving to <laughs> new stuff that is going to be uh, a lot more useful in the long run. I don't know if I can jump in and uh, get into enemy turf here. This is kind of risky. Oh, yep, that was not a good move. Nope. <laughs> I just figured the match was about to end, so I should try to jump, and it's the only one that got hit. Man. 
All right. Uh, so, so yeah, the new abilities. I'm glad to see a lot of them having more use than uh, than some of the ones previously. I think they're just rebalancing a lot of that stuff because they know it's not uh, it's not something that most players are gonna stack like a bomb throw, or bomb distant range up, and stuff like that is just not not used by the average player. So they're trying to make more useful alternatives to the normal ones that we see all the time. Like, yep, there we go. <laughs> uh, another big change that I should mention that is really cool, especially for someone like me who isn't always going to be able to get the splats. Uh, that sounds like a horrible thing where you're in the bathroom all day. If uh, if you, you're not able to get the splats, like you're not able to finish off an enemy inkling, there's a new thing that they track is uh, assists. So like most other you know shooter games, you can... You can get points for assists, so if you do some damage and then they get splatted by someone else, you still get a point for that in your total, and they kind of rack up that with splats, it looks like, as well as how many times you use your special weapon, which is uh, which is kind of interesting to keep track of. It, I think they're going to have a way to keep uh, keep track of how many times you've uh, been splatted, or, you know, I just called them sploops for a while there. Uh, that never really caught on, but I'll keep trying. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think they're, they're kind of changing what stuff they track and, and sort of, you know, to encourage people to, hey, maybe try to get more assists and help out your buddies, stuff like that, to, uh, to encourage the teamwork and camaraderie of Splatoon, of having a squid squad and backing up your buddies. Uh, the other big thing that, uh, that is, is nice is Booyah in this way are the, at least in North America, the two commands that you can say. Now, if you are already splatted, this way becomes ouch. So you are able to say, hey, you know, rather than this way, like, come over to me and help me out, your your buddies can know that you are currently dead a little bit easier because it'll say ouch, and they'll say, they'll know, hey, that person got, you know, my, my teammate got splatted, so I should be a little weary if I'm going to head over to them and help them, knowing that in particular. So it's a little easier to convey that you are dead in Splatoon 2, which I appreciate, because I typically, you know, get splatted a good amount, so I want to let my teammates know that uh, they should come help me any way that they can. Ooh, no, no, no. Ah, we're in a bad spot. Ooh, cannot believe I actually managed to get out from that between those two. Ooh, here's another one. Okay, someone's over there trying to hit us. Good stuff. Look at them go up the side. I saw them. I think I'm going to try to get over here and then throw one of those down. They're sneaking around here, aren't they? Where are they going? They're not headed towards us. They're headed... Yeah, we got to watch both sides here. It's a tough map. To make sure you're tracking everything. Um, I got my special, so I should use it here. For fear of losing it. Let's see if we can get anybody. There. There we go. All right. Cover that well enough. They're starting to move around. The... Every time we go one way, they go around the other. Um... And, uh, so yeah, the different changes to squad communication, that's going to help in addition to an official version of voice chat. That'll be very nice to have. Uh, although I most likely won't use it <laughs> for videos, because you never know, you know, what a squid kid is going to say on a mic. But it's nice that you can communicate with just what's in the game already. I don't, I don't think this is a super necessary game unless you're super, you know, competitive tournament style. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, trying to play, like, if you are one of the people in that invitation, obviously, they had headsets to communicate, so I think just the the average person playing, you can get by with the voice commands, even if it's going to be a little tough to, uh, to communicate exactly when to, you know, hold your special and stuff, stuff like that that's more nuanced, I think, is not going to be covered by booyahs and ouches and stuff. All right, let's see if we can kind of sneak in here and get over the wall, potentially. Gotta keep my ink up, though. Mm -hmm. They're going around that way. If they try to go over the middle, I should be able to catch them. Oh. Nope. There we go. Okay, good. Thank you, Tiller. Always, always a uh, faithful friend to have. Someone's back there. Saw him. Saw him on the way. I'm gonna try to defend this end, because I know that we gotta lock this down. We're doing okay, though. I got a lot of my own squid squad on my team. Jeez. Oh, trying to get him. Ah! Ah! Almost got the two-for-one deal. And, man, this is kind of mixed. They were really into our turf, but we started to get into theirs. I don't know. What do you guys think? Place your bets in the chat. 
It's gonna get revealed in anything. Yep, nah. Okay, that was not close. <laughs> I really thought it was closer than uh, than that. It was a little, yeah. Oh, so the new special. There's uh, the one new special I think they haven't revealed that we saw, other than the weird bomb rush thing. They haven't talked about that. But there's the one called the Ink Storm, the giant ink cloud. And uh, if you've seen that one, you know, in trailers and stuff, I think I'm going to switch weapons. Then uh, it was a little interesting. Like, I wasn't sure exactly how it works, but you have this big thing on your shoulder and you throw it down with a targeting device. And then it's kind of like an ink strike where it goes across the, uh, the screen. Hmm, what could we use here for turf wars that would be good? I'm a little, eh, I don't know. I'm partial to some of the splatlings and stuff like that, but at the same time, I know I'm not going to be able to outplay my opponent in terms of, uh, we should use a longer range weapon than that. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to be faster to get those splats than my opponent a lot of the time, so i got to be a little careful. This has been a while since I've played a Hydra. Let's use the Hydra splatling and try to, you know, post up and just really mow down people. Um... So, uh, so what was the? Th oh yeah, the ink storm. It's a, it's kind of a variation on the ink strike where you throw it. It sends this kind of cloud seeding bomb into the air, and it rains ink down in this cloud that travels over a, a distance. So it kind of meanders across the stage like a rain cloud, dropping your color of ink. And uh, the cool thing about that, like, it doesn't have a very uniform ink coverage, like the ink strike. It kind of leaves like a weird splattered mix but it does make it easier for your team to get you know into that zone it's uh it's in the way that most of the specials are kind of tweaked and and nerfed a little in in this in the sequel it's a little bit different in that it, it doesn't seem as overpowered or like as crucial in splat zones to have you know how the uh, the ink strike is a real game changer in turf wars and splat zones we now have a uh, a variation on it that I don't think is going to be too crazy or anything. Sort of how the uh, the killer whale has become the stingray. It's going to be tough for me to have this ready in time. There we go. Well, it didn't look like I got them somehow. That's okay. I'll take it, even if I didn't kill them. Here we go. Here comes an ink strike. Okay, I'm not sure exactly where that was going to land, so it scared me. The one's coming around the bend. Grandma's house. Where'd they go? There we go. All right. Bubbler is definitely helpful with this set. Uh, let's see. I think I was doing Coming Around the Mountain and... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Two different songs. Oh, no, no, no. Ah, uh, I thought we had that a little bit. I should have been looking at the map. At least he died in pain in the water. No. <laughs> the, <laughs> the kid that took me out was taking it, you know. He got... He had his uh, comeuppance there. Um... So yeah, the uh, the new special looks interesting. I, I'm not sure if it's going to be a game check, like one of the ones that most people are going to use. They were just over here. Yep. I was like, they had to throw that seeker somehow. I wasn't sure where they got to. All right, let's charge this up and just lay down our own little cloud of ink. We got two people here. I'm trying to be careful. Nope. Jeez. Didn't have that charge fast enough. We were doing okay in, this, in the beginning, but I think I need to go around the side. And it looks like someone's getting up there. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, good. Jump into them. That'll give me a good spot. Now that I'm playing a ranged weapon, I can actually kind of sit up here a little bit better and do some of this. Where are you guys hanging out? I got the range on you, so be careful. Don't mess with the Hydra. Oh, man, I'm running out of ink. Not really good to uh, sit and oop, have no ink on this thing. Charge it up, slowly but surely. This is one of those heavy weapons like the uh, the dynamo that has so... Oh, man. I think they lost a player there. I'll just throw that down, because no one's going to be messing with <laughs> You see that cloud of ink? That's the uh, telltale sign that someone disconnected. Um, but, yeah, the... Uh... Oop. Don't dive in there. I saw what you wanted to do, you brush. Um, so, the... Uh... The changes to some of the specials and stuff, I am happy about that. The Stingray actually got a b huge buff after the global test fire, and uh, it, it can now be canceled, and you, like, you can, the Stingray, if you did watch the global test fire, if you didn't, please check out those streams that I, that I did. Um, the cool thing about it was that it did have the, uh, the power to hit through stuff and hit your opponents. It was this charged beam that could hit through walls and hit your, your opponents, but it was kind of rough where if you... Perfect, 
If you threw that out, you were locked into this big Stingray animation, and you were so slow to turn, you had to be so sure what you were going to hit, you know, was what you wanted, because otherwise you're just not hitting anything, and you make yourself very vulnerable. The, uh... The big thing with the, the Stingray, though, is that it probably had the biggest buff of anything I saw, you know, from from the test fire. It can now be, if you wanted to, you know, briefly, during your special, not fire, you can kind of stop firing and, and, you know, pull it away or go into ink and stuff. You don't have to always be firing. And also, for the brief time you're firing it, it shows you little x-rays of inklings through the wall, almost like a, a point sensor sort of echolocator tracking device, so it is so much better than it was in the test fire. I think it was already pretty decent for people who knew what they were doing with it, you know. I was never able to fully do well with it compared to the inkjet and stuff like that, but it's even better now. So that is, uh, that is gonna be destruction, you know, just a very devious tool of people, like chargers especially, that know how to hit at long range really well. They're gonna use that to find people's positions and it's almost like a quick tracker because the echolocator doesn't seem to be returning. But again, we did get the point sensor revealed. Oh man, two E-leaders. I'm gonna let them cover some of this for me so I don't have to... Well, no one's going this side. Uh, yeah, this is a very, you know, charger-like weapon. So I gotta be careful and try to use the cover. I saw the, uh, you know, tips in the chat. It's been so long since I've played not just the Splatlings. I don't think I have played one of those in a while, but also the... Hydra here. Let's see if they're gonna try to move in, and here we go. They got out of the way when they saw me. They're afraid. Not really. Charlie must have taken him out, or else... Nope. Oh, no, the Kraken. I gotta be careful. Man, they got some swim speed up, and... Whoop! Ah! Jeez! <laughs> I'll booyah that. Man, oh, super bro. He was watching the stream. He... No. He's got cold-blooded... Yeah, some of the abilities... I think cold-blooded is also returning, so I should mention that, so you can't be tracked as long. Being tracked does not seem as big of a deal in Splatoon 2 because uh, you don't have to worry about the Echo Locator, so you can kind of... Hey, excuse me. You don't have to worry so much about somebody watching you from afar when the Echo Locator is not a factor anymore. Almost got him there. Oh, he's going to hit that down and then... Got to be careful. He can't get up here, luckily, unless he goes all the way around, which I won't put past Super Bro, because it seems like he would do that to try to get a splat. Anything for a splat. Oh, somebody's coming up, I think. Yep, here they go. Where are they? They're peeking around the corner. I do have my uh, bubbler, so I can kind of charge and maybe hit them before they get out of here. Nope. They're going to be waiting here for me. Where'd they go? Oop. Walking across the thing, yeah. <laughs> this is such a weird standoff of two close-range fighters. Or not close. Two long-range fighters at close range. Are they really still waiting for me to go across here? Somebody booyahed. I can't booyah back. I'm holding a charge. Yep, that was bad. Yeah, they're all the way over there. I could tell from... Well, Gustavo's on there as well. If you watch the, the streams, you know how good he is. But yeah, having multiple really good chargers, I don't think this is going to be our match. This is such a weird Turf Wars match, too, because we got these heavy chargers on the opposite side, making life so, so tough for us. No, couldn't get out of that ink in time. Ryan, man, look at all that run speed. I don't think I should be uh, using such a slow weapon against some of these people that are so good, so I'm going to switch off the heavy splatling here in just a second. Especially Ryan going crazy on the walls there. Here he goes. I got him. Alright. Somebody's going to take me out here before we get too far to the end. Yeah. See that? Yeah. Look at this. This is so, so blue that it's just not even close. I think the Chargers pushed in little by little more and more and made it rough on us to get anywhere past that. Okay. So what other stuff am I missing? I did mention, you know, the new special, the new... All the new subs and, and different abilities and stuff like that. But uh, let's talk about Salmon Run a little bit. I think that's the most exciting thing for me in Splatoon 2 is this co-op mode. Look at Super Bro. Man, 10 with no sploops. Good record there. Let's switch to something I can do a little bit better while I'm talking about stuff. Um, so the Salmon Run mode, that is going to be so awesome because I, I just... I, 
I think I ultimately would rather play with you guys than against you guys, because uh, in the long run, it feels a little bit uh, a little bit nicer for to have teamwork than playing against each other. I know competitive element of this game is very big, so I do enjoy that. But at the same time, I think I would uh, I'd much more enjoy having you guys help me out at kind of like squad mode, which maybe we should do that a little bit before we end here to uh, to get rewards. So Salmon Run, it's a little strange it's like a horde mode but there's all these different types of salmonid they're all going there's different maps that was revealed we're not just going to only play on the one that we've seen so far the spawning grounds but that's the first one uh you can start out at a very amateur level it's it's called like i think part timer and then it goes into professional and so the percentage that you choose for that mode is uh going to determine the difficulty as well as the reward so you can do five percent up to two hundred percent a hundred percent is supposed to be you know really really difficult but then it can go even farther than that so it's you and uh if you're playing locally you can do two or three uh buddies or one buddy you know, you know total two players or four players or you know you got some variation there and if you're not playing local if you're playing online they didn't mention that it's going to be more of an event based thing for people that play the uh the online version of it so you're not going to be able to play salmon run anytime you want which is a little it's a little sad to hear because it's going to be more like a splatfest i wasn't expecting them to reveal that i think it's going to be very frequent though compared to splatfest from what they said man i got another end zap just popping right up and hitting me but I was avenged, thank you. Whoever that was, they went off into the night. Um, so yeah, the Salmon Run, it's a little hard, yeah, it, it's what you would you know call a horde mode in most other games, where you're playing against a bunch of computer-controlled enemies and trying to take them out and protect your base, but it's more of a thing where you're trying to get the rewards from them and deliver them back. You're not really protecting anything other than yourselves and your teammates, and you get these, uh, these golden eggs and bring them back to uh to fulfill a quota you're working for grizz i think it's called grizzco industries you listen to this little radio that is a bear with a, a salmon in its mouth which is that you know that very uh it's an iconic figure that i've always wanted one of those wooden carved ones but i'm sure they're crazy expensive there's one uh, on the pokemon site that's even like a parody of that with Ur ursaring holding i think it has a ma magikarp in its mouth or something um but anyways, you're getting this mysterious uh, job from a uh, strange guy that you don't know. You know, you're, it's a rat. It's just called Raspy Voice over the radio. It's very bizarre because it's hard to know who is giving you these orders. And uh, ultimately, they are going to give out the rewards though for collecting these eggs. But it seems a little like a little weird where we might be hurting these creatures that might. <laughs> not have any grudge against us they're just trying to get to their spawning grounds and stuff so i think we're going to be a little conflicted ultimately we'll find out it kind of has that thing with the with the single player mode with the Oct octolines and octarians where we're like are we the bad guys or but that that's intriguing enough but i, I think it's going to be really fun trying to take down these waves of uh of creatures with you guys and it'll be a big event thing we'll, d we'll do streams and everything just like with the Splatfest. but i will try to also play locally to to be able to show you guys salmon run more frequently when it's not necessarily going on because then I can uh, just play with Danielle as a two-player mode which will be really weird having only two people on a squid squad kind of a strange change of uh, of how the game normally works but we will adapt and try our best to uh, to, to get a bunch of the rewards locally and there's a different set of rewards for um, a different set of rewards for when you play online to when you play locally and you can use those in multiplayer also single player i should have mentioned too they the developers said anything you like things you earn in single player will affect multiplayer and and vice versa things you own or uh you get from playing multiplayer help you out in single player as well so you can play it in either order even though single player typically is the uh the way to go if you want to learn how to play the game and, and get a little bit better before you jump into multiplayer i'm definitely not going to miss the uh the losing music from this game because the one in the second game is a little nicer <laughs> sounding this one really rubs it in when you uh you take a loss um so yeah definitely tons of new stuff in splatoon 2 that i'm excited for the even yeah even just the graphical up uplift for the switch i think just looking at it 
in trailers and stuff it might not look all that different in a way because it is you know similar gameplay but seeing a lot of the gameplay footage from E3 the tournament salmon run stuff you can really notice it's weird the ink is like it looks a lot more like a weird kind of I don't know it's making me reconsider the whole concept of squids shooting out their ink at people because it looks uh it, it's it's a nice look but it is bizarre looking and uh ooh, I got oh I got my buddy Gustavo on my team so I think we're we might just automatically win this one even if I don't do anything because that's how good he is I'm gonna try to focus a little more as we get close to the end of the stream here because I feel like I've been playing on autopilot as I do when I'm talking about a lot of stuff it's a little harder to focus on getting the splats and getting the turf covered and then maybe actually we'll finish up with a squad battle after this I think that's a good way to go time our ink strikes together oh no no ah man he popped up there while I was thinking no one was going to be in the way because there were so many ink strikes going on they got their own this is uh, right you know speaking of Splatoon 2 so much this is kind of the colors that we will see in uh oh I put my thing the same exact spot we both had that same idea um this is kind of the ink colors that are the uh, the poster to the pink and the green for the sequel because orange and orange and blue are kind of the ones that you associate with this game a little bit more or at least I do because they're on the box and stuff so it's nice to see they're switching up a lot of the colors one of the, one thing that I could say that's a little bit of a critique for the ink colors in the sequel the ink does look better but some of the ink color choices it feels like they're kind of putting putting colors together just to have new color combinations it's like they used up a ton of the really good ones for this game and to come up with fresh colors you know to keep things fresh they uh, they decided to try some new ones that like the salmon run colors the default are these uh, this kind of weird uh, green and orange that I think we had one splat fest that used it I'm trying to remember which one it was but it was a strange color combination that's a little sickly looking but uh, luckily you don't always have to have those colors the the salmonids the enemies are always sort of a shade a, a kind of pukey shade of green that you associate with being you know something gross so you will try not to run into them man run into them. I was saying I was running into him so I said run into them uh, so yeah you'll want to stay out of that ink but you there are different variations it's not always orange when you're playing I saw purple and pink and there's some really cool little variations in salmon run like if you uh, you get lucky or unlucky there's different ones called like a salmon rush where you get all these different salmon just blitzing on different players there's fog and nighttime effects to to change things up and make it a little tougher to uh, to deal with all of the the different stuff happening and you do have to stay you know on the uh, the little area you're giving which will typically flood like the tide will rise as time goes on the big thing that I I feel like uh, that makes Salmon Run really interesting to me, not just like the story and the co-op elements, but there's something cool about the way the way Splatoon just uh, has a knack for taking things from the real world and adapting them and making them more fun and uh, cooler in, like than they would normally be. Things that might not be something I'd either be interested in or uh, or stuff that's actively rough to do. And an example, like fashion, is something that I would normally put much stock in. But in this game, you know, it's your gear, you have abilities, you have different stats tied to whatever clothes you use. So you get engaged with that, you want to, you know, find a good hat, find a shirt that you like. Even if you're not as interested in the look, it helps you because it's part of the gameplay. So it's like if in real life we wore clothes and got powered up from the clothes, that would be, you know, it would make me more interested in that. In Splatoon 2... Salmon Run being this thing where these these inklings go out and uh, and try to get these eggs and they're going out in the morning they got the, their waders on they're kind of like fisherman gear I feel like that's the Splatoon twist on being like a fisherman going out and you know you got to go out you got to get on the boat and go out with your buddies the crew you know it's a grueling job but in Splatoon it's fun because you get to shoot these weird fish creatures and get their eggs and it's this whole uh, fast-paced combat situation so I think it's almost like taking a very Japanese job being a fisherman because you know seafood is so important over there it's an island nation so I think they're putting that spin on it where you get all these rewards it's a lot more fun than being a normal fisherman of course to uh, to go out there and uh, and fight monsters that way and get rewards and everything but it has some of the weird stuff of a job where you got to listen to 
to your boss, even if they're kind of a mean jerk. Like, the guy on the radio does not seem like he's that great of a, a dude. He could be a secret grizzly bear, is a theory, because he is wanting all these eggs. He has a bear radio. That would, that would pop up a lot of questions for me, because Judd is supposedly the only mammal left in the world. If you watched it, you know, Octo Valley from the first game, you saw the, the Sea Scrolls. The secret is kind of out where he was frozen, and there's a reason why he's the only mammal left when uh, pretty much everybody else are these squids Ooh. and uh, and different sea creatures like jellyfish and, and stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, so if there was some type of weird bear, that would be bizarre, but I'd love to see it. I gotta, ooh, jeez, okay. I might have to not be down here. That guy's gonna be a jerk and slosh over the side. Ooh, no, nope, he's gonna slosh over and get me if I'm not careful. Gotta be so careful here. Nope, ah, man. Charlie, why'd you have to mess with my one-on-one -on -one with that guy? Um, <laughs> should've been watching my flank. Oh, there's somebody in our turf right in the center. Ah, uh, this is an intense match already, because we're getting back and forth going. Oh, uh, yeah, they're pushing their way in. I saw someone over here, and they're making my... Ah, oh, man. I should really have not tried to scale that while the ink strike was going. But they, they might have known. They were like, hey, this guy can get to me. Best thing to do, throw that ink strike where the ramp is. They predicted my movement. Stuff that I'm getting better at in arms, but I'm getting rusty at in Splatoon. Uh, but anyways, yeah, that's a, another factor I was going to mention that I didn't say was uh, when you play the online version, you are assigned different weapons by your boss on the radio, and you have to, you know, adapt to using those weapons, and lots of cool little factors that I know might not be super... You know, like, a lot of people might not be as into that if they're used to playing one weapon in one way, but it's I feel like those types of challenges and things thrown at you can be really interesting and, uh, and make the game push you to, uh, to do, ah, jeez, to, uh, go out of your comfort zone. I really thought that we had that area locked down enough, and that risky super jump might end up being what takes us out here. I always feel like I regret super jumping, because sometimes I'll need to get in there quick, because we are running out of people on our side, you know, we want to get that turf, but then we got to deal with the fact that the, uh, the opponent is going to just go in there and, uh, and hit you. Stealth Super Jump being gone is going to make things a little a little difficult. I want to try to get my Ink Strike here. Last few seconds if I can. Come on, come on, come on. Throw it. Nope. Ah, I thought I would have had it in time. I was trying to get it ready, but probably would not have mattered in that last match. Okay, let's go over to squads and uh, finish up with maybe one or two squad matches just to see if I can get a rank up a little bit because I, I would love to hit S+. I don't know if that's going to happen without me focusing entirely on playing and not talking, because I play much better in that situation. But we are close to leveling up. I'm going to try squads to finish up. Whoever can jump in, it'll be much appreciated. I'm going to switch to a, uh, a weapon set that better fits splat zones on Walleye and Port Mackerel. I think I'm going to go Octobrush. As excited you know, as I am with the Octobrush returning to this... Uh, this series, like, I'm glad to see the Octobrush is going to be back in Splatoon 2, and it's also cool that it has the new sub, the Autobot, and, uh, the, uh, I think the, uh, the special might be the Inkjet. So let's see, I haven't done this in so long, but we're going to try to set up a quad squad, and hopefully we'll get some people joining, and we won't go up against S plus four players from Japan, the ultimate team ready to crush us. Uh, if you are S rank, you don't lose any from this, so hopefully, yeah, there we go, Gustavo jumped in. He is super, super ready to uh, to help out, to jump in streams. He's always, you know, hey, we're going to have a stream this weekend. You know, even when I'm having, you know, trying to schedule stuff, he's he's ready to be in here no matter what. So I appreciate it. Same with Spinel and Charlie, both really good players. <laughs> All right, I'm feeling confident about this team. It's The ranks are a little palindrome there. I hope we don't get a bunch of S-rank people, but I figure anyone still playing squad mode with Splatoon are probably really, really good because they've been playing this whole time. But we'll see who we get matched up with. All right, and then we'll we'll finish up here soon. Oh, it's a try squad. All right. Okay, so maybe one or two matches in squad mode to finish up. If I missed anything about the news reveals, there was so much stuff. Please let me know, and I'll cover it in the future. If you have any questions about Splatoon stuff, definitely uh, hit me up. You know, in the comments or you can talk to me a little bit easier 
on Twitter, at Swimmingbird941. I can get, you know, a better conversation going with you guys on Twitter. It's a little easier to, uh, to talk one-on-one -on -one in that context. All right. I should try to be in the zone here quickly, but I might actually try to watch this side area. We're in control. I don't know if this Tri-Squad is going to try to give up super quick because we're pushing in on it, you know. We almost have the zone. Yeah, we have it. Okay. I was going to say. So, oh yeah, some of the other little changes. I can't remember if I mentioned these before. I don't think I have because they are recent developments. Oh, we lost control. The recent developments and uh, changes to ranked mode. Uh, so, splat zones. It's mostly the same, but we have this new feature in in this mode where you can actually tell how much of the zone is covered by enemy ink or your ink. It'll it'll have this little meter in the middle of the uh, the counter. As you see, the counter in the middle. It's slightly different in Splatoon 2, where you get this meter in the middle to help you figure out, you know, how many uh, how many spots that you know you're kind of missing. It'll give you a nice little setup to show. Uh, got my ink Zuka, but I'm horrible with that. That's the one thing I don't like about this one set. I missed the Kraken, but we have these maps where I don't think I need to use a Kraken so much. I should focus on the, uh, oh, almost, ah, <laughs> I should focus on trying to, yeah, to, yeah, not use beacons if we have a really close range map like Walleye. There we go. Thank you so much, Squid Squad, for helping me get a little bit of points here. The Bloop Troop is reunited thanks to these guys. Uh, so then, yeah, I, I did decently there. That was a tri squad, so I shouldn't pat myself on the back or pat pat the squad on the back too much. But if you if we can finish up with me getting into S rank, that would be crazy. Because um, it's been a while since I've been in that uh, that vicinity. Um, so what was I? Oh yeah, the uh, the different modes. So we're playing a lot. I'm gonna switch over here, and hopefully we'll get port mackerel. Uh, the other the other change is tower control. There's checkpoints now where you have to stay on the tower for 10 seconds or so at these checkpoints along the way. So it's a lot harder to blitz. You got to be locking down the tower more if you want to win. And at the same time, the more squids you have on the, the tower, the same idea. It'll travel faster. It'll go through checkpoints faster if you keep a bunch of your squad on there. So it's got some nuances to it. I think it'll be not as easy to... Uh, to do the uh, the whole blitz, you know, everyone get on there, just crazy, get your bubblers, get your stealth super jump, quick respawn, blast all your specials coordinated, and destroy at tower control, as is the case in this game a little bit. Uh, no bitterness, but, you know, I've been in that situation <laughs> many times. Uh, and then Rainmaker, the Rainmaker fires completely differently. Oh, this is going to be bad. Uh, the Rainmaker is now... Uh, it shoots out these blaster like kind of explosion explosions like a glob of ink rather than an ink zooka and it will you can see where it's gonna land you can kind of blast it a different distance depending on how much you charge it up and if you use that uh, you're gonna have a, uh, a tougher time I think fighting on your own if you're holding the rainmaker but the uh, the big thing is they're trying to emphasize teamwork same as the uh, the thing I was just talking about with trying to make sure that uh, that people are able to uh, coordinate on the tower more than they necessarily would in this game. I'll try to get a couple of these going, but I also don't want to stay too far away from my team here. They're going to be pushing around, so I should really try to... Here we go. Can't believe I actually got that in time. Maybe throw one of these here. I should be watching all the sides and all the angles. Because they're going to sneak around. Oh, that was not enough to take that sprinkler out. Man. Okay. There go. Yeah. We can lock down this one this one uh, bit of turf here well enough, but I feel like we're really going to have a tough time taking theirs. I almost wonder if they're going to underestimate us as a S and A combined uh, <laughs> squad and have a thing where let's see if we can get in here and get them in time. I'll jump back to my thing. Nope. Yep. Okay. Good. 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 Can't believe I made that in time. All right. I figured I'd chase him in and try, but when it didn't work out, I had to do what I could do. Here we go. Got the dynamo. Get that back. They're in control for a bit there. There goes the roller around the side. Ah! I got him. And the bubbler. I splatted him right before the bubbler activated. And uh, not so great, though. I think my buddy got taken out. 
We're, we're giving him a fight. More than I thought, you know, considering my rank and everything, but I think ultimately we're going to have a tough time here. If I'm getting trades, we're not getting that zone back. I need to take him out without getting taken out myself. Come on, Bloop Troop. We got some points. I'm okay with losing them, though, because, you know, in the end, we're doing our best, trying to fight the good fight. Can I get over here and maybe take out the dynamo that's trying to get me? It doesn't seem like it. I'm trying to get my uh, ink up a little bit to potentially get a... Oh, jeez. All right, jump in. Take him out if I can. Ooh, I had to get out of there because I knew I was running out of ink. Let's see if we can get in and save the zone. Nope, not working out so hot. Might try to get over here and get their zone. Nope. This guy's level whatever. <laughs> level whatever guy. Oh, help me here. Ah, oh, man, they got a charger. Okay. That's bad for me, for sure. I'm just gonna zip around the side here and take me out. They're really locking us down. Oh, I got rolled over, and so did Charlie. Wasn't a safe spot to jump to. Um, but yeah, they're really mowing us down here. We're trying to not get the knockout, you know. Trying to not go down without a fight, but I think ultimately, yeah, they're gonna get us. I wanna try to get on the side. Man, they got a really good balance of stuff, because, yep, that splash wall, with the, there's a dynamo charger. Their, their weapon balance seemed on point, and they had the ranks to prove it. Alright, we'll do one more here. It'd be nice to go out on a win, but if we don't, that's alright. I might jump out and see if we can get a fresh squad, so get a couple more of you guys playing in here. My beacons seem to help a little bit, but I might not use this, uh, this set, because the the, uh, oh man, I've gone down one point from when we started. Uh, the, the beacon's not gonna be so useful on Walleye, so I think I'm gonna switch off for the last match. Let's get a fresh squad. Thank you guys for watching. The, uh, the big thing with Ranked 2 is it's so easy to get booted out of the rank that you're in, but when you try to go up, especially towards the end, like you saw, we got nine points for a win, and even though we were, you know, had some A-rankers, we got, uh, 10 points taken for a loss, so this game, I hopefully they'll, I, I get why they balance the rank stuff the way they do, obviously, they want to push people into the rank they're meant to be in, but it can be really frustrating when the teams aren't balanced by the same rank, and you get the situation that we were just in, where I lost more points than we, we gained, even though it was a tough battle, but what are you gonna do? I think they they're revamping so much other stuff, in terms of, you know, sub-specials, balance, all that good stuff, I hope that they take another look at the point system in ranked, because <laughs> it is a little, yeah, it's a little frustrating when you can uh, get outmatched even before the, the match starts, and then they, they boot you down to hit you when you're down even more. All right, so let's uh, let's try this last one here. So this is the, another thing that can happen. We're in squad mode. We have three A rankers. We'll probably get a team full of S pluses. That was, a, you know... So that just happens, and if I lose, I'm going to lose a bunch of points, but it already... I'm going to go in with the hopefulness that we can maybe win. It seems like a foregone conclusion, but let's fight Bloop Troop to the bitter end. This will be the last match. Thank you guys again. And, uh, you know, if you want to subscribe, I appreciate it. If you feel like leaving a like, I definitely appreciate that as well. And uh, if you have Twitter, like I mentioned, you can follow me at Swoonbird941. That's a good place to talk. Splatoon and any other games. Uh, definitely check out ARMS, because I'm having a lot of fun playing that. It's nice to have a one-on-one -on -one situation, a fighting game sort of sort of game to... Uh, oh, man. You can tell I'm uh, a little out of it, because I had my beacon. Ooh, man. Okay, we took him out. Super Bro got him eventually. He's got all this quick respawn. I tried to place a beacon, but it was a bomb. That's why you want to pay very close attention to the set that you're using. And... Uh, doesn't seem like we're going to survive very long, so this will probably be close to the end for the old bloop troop. But we're going to do our best here and hopefully not go down without a bit of a fight. It would be nice if we somehow got the zone before they trounce us completely. They're right there. That's not going to work, though. Maybe I can clip over the edge and hit them. They're just hiding there. 
So yeah, if, if a lot of people who play squads, you can kind of get them under the assumption that they're going to be communicating via microphone and stuff or playing with each other close by. So I, I try not to get disheartened when we go up against a team like this that is just going to be an S-ranked, you know, ground pound here, getting stomped by the Squid Squad, and they're cracking, and that is all she wrote. Splatoon 2, a fresh start that I'm looking forward to, and not having to uh, to deal with some of the... <laughs> Obviously, people are still going to have the experience that they earned from this game, but I think going into Splatoon 2, it'll be nice to have a clean slate, and... Uh, start from C and work our way up. Thanks again for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this. Thank you to all, the, yeah, all of you out there watching and helping me by taking part in these streams, even if that was an uphill battle. I appreciate you guys being here to get beat up with me. I lost a little rank, but that's the way she goes. All right, I'll see you guys next time for more Splatoon. Goodbye.